matters financial and geopolitical from a frontier. Thank you kindly for stopping by. We certainly had an eventful weekend. Um, I went on Sunday to the President, President Obama's address at uh, Kasarani, and he said so many things. It was such a powerful uh, uh, speech. He's such a great orator. He said, I'm here as president of a country that sees Kenya as an important partner. I'm here as a friend who wants Kenya to succeed, he said. He, and then I was at the event and I tweeted some of his comments. Imagine you have a team and you don't let half the team play. Um, I think he's absolutely right when it comes to uh, female emancipation and girl power. He said, this is really strong, powerful. We are all part of one tribe, the human tribe. Politics based on tribe and ethnicity is a politics that will tear a country apart. Um, I also met uh, Josephine Coulier, who got a shout out from President Obama, which was very cool. And my weekend piece uh, was POTUS, Obama effect on our economy's progress. President Obama's arrival on Friday night was preceded by an extraordinary show of power. Early in the week I'd watched four Bell Boeing V-22 Ospreys land on a field in front of my office. The Osprey is a multi-mission tilt-rotor military aircraft with both, both a vertical takeoff and landing and short takeoff and landing capability designed to combine the functionality of a conventional helicopter with the long-range high-speed cruise performance of a turboprop aircraft. The sight of these Ospreys was an induce, indisputable thing. The Al Jazeera cameraman then pointed out some other smaller helicopters in the sky and said to me, those are the real deal. I asked what they were. He answered, those are attach Apache attack helicopters, and I learnt an Apache features a nose-mounted sensor suit for target acquisition and night vision systems. It is armed with a 30mm M230 chain gun carried between the main landing gear under the aircraft's forward fuselage. It has four hard points mounted on stub wing pylons, typically carrying a mixture of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles and Hydra 70 rocket pods. If anyone had any doubt about the paraphernalia of US hard power, looking up at the skies as did millions of Kenyans laid that to rest. The President of the United States was tapping an enormous well of goodwill and political capital here in Kenya. Ahead of his election to the presidency in 2008, Barack Obama described himself as a blank canvas on which millions of people project themselves. And here in Kenya, the projection is a lot easier than the projection might be for many in the US, including Donald Trump, on whose coiffure El Chapo Guzman has now placed a price. The president emitted a powerful signal throughout his visit. Africa is on the move. Africa is one of the fastest growing regions in the world, he told a Global Entrepreneurship Summit. Endorsements do not rank higher than that. He said entrepreneurship is the spark of prosperity. President Obama clearly has a tailwind in his second term. Obama's message of inclusivity of women being in entrepreneurial powerhouses and as President Kenyatta noted in the press conference at the State House, he is a champion of the continent's youth. He elevated the discussion. He told us to reach higher, run faster. And that is the point. Now, obviously, our expectations were sky high around a US package for Kenya. It is clear that the US is putting a major package to work on behalf of women and youth. There is informed talk that withholding tax on interest will be removed and this will unshackle big ticket loans for our infrastructure projects. Most importantly, the US is back and our president touched on this with finesse when he said, we are not looking east or west, we just want progress. 
Make no mistake, the US and its president is seeking a major reordering of our geopolitics. That reordering and rebalancing has now begun. On the 24th of July, I tweeted, I liked POTUS's version of shock and awe. Yesterday, Osprey is descending in front of my office. On July the 25th, <clears throat> when I did an interview with Al Jazeera, these were the Apaches flying over the Nairobi skyline. It was good to catch up and speak in person with Andrew um, uh, on uh, Saturday as well. Home thoughts, I like this photograph of a man throwing a girl into the air at the National Reserve in the Black Sea port. This photograph is by Pavel Rebrov. And uh, this is a photograph I took of the viewing deck at Syracuse Lodge. And uh, we've also done a little six minute video or eight minute video about our visit. So do have a look at that if you fancy. Uh, the Guardian saying there is at least a recognition now that ISIS isn't leverage against Assad. They have to be dealt with. This is referencing Turkey. Where interestingly the response to ISIS has been to clobber the Kurds as well. Um, I like this quote about uh, Ted Turner. It would be fun to risk everything he had built to scare the hell out of everybody and get back in the front seat of the roller coaster. This is early on when he moved into television. Currency markets, Euro actually has topped 111 earlier today. Dollar index, which opened up at 97.06, is lower. Dollar yen, 123.34. Swiss franc, when I checked, 0 0.9605. The pound, 155.23. Aussie is at 0 0.7281. India rupee back over 64 at 64.055. South Korean won 11.6726. The real, 335.88. I remain a big bear of the real. Egyptian pound, 7.1894, and the Rand and multi-year lows, 12.6101. I'll put up a three-month chart of the dollar index. I remain bullish, as I have for a while. Um, uh, Holger tweeted this, Euro unchanged despite Greek PM Cypress under pressure over covert Syriza dra drachma plan reports. But subsequently, we had a big spike up to 111. Gold, 11.0405. Um, I still think we're in a big bear market on gold. Hedge funds are holding their first ever net short position in gold. I'll put up that image. Crude oil, we're around the 48 level, uh, but very, very bearish. And copper, uh, Jamie at Reuters tweeted, it's at a six-year low. I'll put up that chart as well. Commodities have come under phenomenal selling pressure, um, which is something that I predicted last year. China stocks plunged, suffering their biggest one-day loss since February 2007. Um, the drops were the biggest since that date. Uh, Shanghai and Shenzhen fell 8.6% and 8.5%. And I spoke about this and wrote about this a little while ago. Um, on the 6th of July 2015 when I said now consider that there are more individual investors in the Chinese stock market than there are Communist Party members and you will appreciate that this stock market crash represents probably the biggest political risk to the neo-totalitarian uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, Holger tweeted uh, um, uh, an image of the, of the fall and said China route is back and I think you know given that they threw everything at it they're going to have to throw a lot more. The Economist is saying deaths from jihadist conflicts in Africa are growing rapidly how should governments react let me put up the image that they posted. Burundi president wins a third term in vote, op in vote as opposition spurned it Kurzinza received 69.4% support in the July 21 polls, drew a turnout of 73.4% of eligible voters. Some folks who should know reckon the turnout was around 20%. Addis Fortune tweeted US President Barack Obama is in Ethiopia. Let me put that up. Apparently, he will discuss with African leaders on Monday a Plan B for South Sudan. 
if the country's warring parties do not forge a peace deal by the middle of August. And uh, I think he should just read the riot act to them. South African oil shares up 3.186% uh, year to date, but fell 1.69% uh, on Friday. Jamie at Reuters has tweeted uh, that the Rand is at a 14 year low. Let me put up that image that he was posted. Retreated as much as 1.9%, 12.68, just three cents short of a 14 year low it reached on June the 5th. Um, South Africa's central bank raised borrowing costs for the first time in a year on Thursday by a quarter of a point. A 25 basis point increase is not going to be sufficient to underpin the RAND permanently against a background of higher US rates and uncertainty around growth in China. The RAND dropped 2.5% against the dollar last week and in 2015 it's down 8.5%. Egyptian pound is at 7.8069. Egyptian EGX30 is minus 10.5%. 32%. Year to date, Nigerian all share is at a four month low, down 10.28%. Ghana stock exchange is down 0.886%. GE says they have booked $2.5 billion of African orders from oil to locomotives. GE, which has its Africa office in Nairobi, may double its workforce by the end of this year as it seeks to expand its footprint on the continent. The company plans to open a regional office in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, to cover Francophone Africa, according to Ireland. The potential in Africa is huge, says Jay Island. Kenya-US companies in talks on multi-billion dollar port deal. The US companies want to take part in the Lamu port, Southern Sudan, Ethiopia Transport Corridor, which envisages the construction of a port, a power plant, railway, other facilities, according to Issa Timani. Discussions are being led by Alios Kenya Limited, a closely held power and infrastructure developer known as AKL. AKL has been in ongoing negotiations with the US government and government of Kenya, proposing a suite of integrated critical infrastructure solutions that will initiate Kenya's LAPSAT program. The suite of projects being negotiated by AKL is known as the American Package, to member said. The big issue with this is really security. Barack Obama puts Kilimanjaro Safari in Lamu on his post-presidency -pres bucket list. I know there are places in this beautiful nation that I haven't discovered, so I'm going to make sure when I get back, and it is not just Kenya, it is an ecosystem connected from Uganda to Tanzania, he told capital FM. Climbing Kilimanjaro seems like something that should be on my list of things to do once I get out of here. The Secret Service generally doesn't like me climbing mountains, but as a private citizen, hopefully I can get away with something like that. Um, he said he loved the Maasai Mara and Serengeti National Parks and had found fond memories of a trip to Lamu Island and Kenya's Indian Ocean coast that he had made with his wife, Michelle, when they were engaged. Lamu is high on my list. Michelle and I went there when we were engaged. I remember taking those dows out fishing and the captain of the boat cooking the fish right on the beach. It was remarkable, he said. Let me put up a photograph of the setting sun in Lamu that I took many moons ago. Kenya Shilling 101 at 27. A little bit more stability coming into play here. Nairobi All Share is down 5.96% and at an 11 month low. NSE 20 is down 11.97% and at a 29 month low. BAT reported first half profit before tax accelerated 8.27%. Gross revenue was up 2.99%. Uh, profit before tax up 8.27%. Earnings per share up eight and a quarter percent. Operation margin up by 2.2 to 28.1 percent. Cash generated from operations increased by half a billion. Interim dividend is unchanged. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Gross revenue increased driven by improved sales mix in the domestic market and the benefit of foreign exchange movements arising from export sales. Solid results, I thought. WPP Scan Group result, uh, reported first half results, profit before tax climbed 12.43%. Billings were down 9.825%, however. Revenue was down 2.34%. Interest income was up 73.45%. Profit after tax up 12.43%. Profit uh, before tax up 12.43%. Profit after tax up 1.44%. Revenue increased by 2.3%. On a constant currency basis, the business delivered revenue growth of 6.5%, they said. Lots of the profit coming from interest income. Currency impacted earnings by more than 400 basis points. So that's the story. I'm glad to be back. Um, I, I hope you all followed the Obama story, which was marvellous. And uh, we're hoping for a positive economic spillover effect here. Once again, thank you for stopping by.